Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today's lecture comprises of um, two very important diseases. The first is pediculosis and the second one is scabies. So let's proceed with the lecture. First, I'm going to discuss the lice infestations. The lice are member of order Therapetera. Lyses are wingless dorsoventrally flattened insects which are obligate ectoparasites of birds and mammals. Therapetera are highly host specific and spend their entire life on the host. Members of suborders Anoplura are blood sucking ectoparasites of mammals. Humans are parasitized by two species of Anoplura the pediculosis humanus and therus pubis. Pediculosis, pediculus humanus are further divided into pediculus humanus capitus, which is the head louse, and pediculus humanus humanus, which is the clothing or body louse. And the therus pubis is also known as the pubic or crab louse. Head lice and clothing lice are morphologically and biologically similar, but have distinct ecologies. One is living in the scalp and other is living on the clothes. They are capable of interbreeding, but on the host, they maintain their territorial preferences. The therus pubis is morphologically quite distinct from pediculus. Anoplura are vessel feeders, also known as the solanophages, uh, solanophages. They introduce their mouth parts directly into the blood vessel to withdraw blood. Head lies or pediculosis capitis. The head louse has a worldwide distribution and head louse infestation or also known as the pediculosis cap capitis is common both in developed and developing countries. The traditional perception that head lies is a parasitosis exclusively associated with school children of low socioeconomic status must now be challenged. There is high rate of louse infection uh, uh, reported from USA, Canada, and several other developed countries. And in UK alone, the prevalence is 2%. Head lice are common in the ages between three to 11 years, and girls are more frequently infected than boys. Long hairs and head-to-head -head contact and hair con head to head contact and hair contact is probably more likely between girls than in boys. Older children tend to be more independent and more separate from their peers, so they are relatively less affected by this infestation. The contribution of hair length to infection is also a reason. And head lice is quite common in Indian subcontinent where hair oils and creams are frequently used and heads are, and hairs are kept long and tied up. In developing countries, the spread of lice is encouraged by poverty, poor hygiene, and overcrowding. The putative role of caps, scarves, combs, and brushes is doubtful, but is, should be considered and given importance. Head lice is not known to transmit any human pathogen. However, Bartonella quantana and Acinobacter um, vomini was detected from adult head lice. Pathophysiology. Head lice uh, or the lice are the adult females, grayish white in color, three to four millimeter long, and male are slightly smaller. So in size, the lice is um, of a size that can be easily visible. And the lice have usually three pairs of legs and there are claws on the legs that are adapted for clinching the hairs. During a lifespan, approximately 40, uh, that is approximately of 40 days, a female um, lice lay about seven eggs daily. The eggs are cemented to the 
hair shaft with a chitinous cement material which is secreted by the female accessory gland. So these are the um, hair, is the nets with an operculum attached to the hair shaft. Eggs are attached to close to the surface of the scalp. They are oval, flesh colored and have a lid operculum keeping the free end of the egg. Once the louse has emerged, the empty egg cases or nets appear white and are now easier to see than the intact egg, egg which are close to the scalp surface. The egg hatch in about eight days and following three molds, the louse nymph reach maturity in approximately 10 days. Clinical features. Scalp pruritus is the characteristic symptom of head louse inf uh, infection. Secondary bacterial infection may occur as a result of scratching. Pruritic papular lesions may occur on the nape of the neck and occasionally generalized non-specific pruritic eruption develops. And such kind of eruption should raise suspicion of head lice. In severe and neglected cases, pus and exudate may produce matting of the hairs, a state that is, that is termed as the plica polonica from its prevalence in Poland in early part of 20th century. The empty egg cases or nets occur in greatest density on parietal and occipital regions, and on naked eye examination may be confused with peripylar keratin cyst. The difference on microscopy is that the peripylar keratin cyst surrounds the hair shaft, while the nets are attached to one side of the hair shaft. So this picture shows several lyses along with the head uh, nets that are attached to the hair. These are the few nets. These are another few, two more nets. Investigation. Detection of adult lice and nymph provides an evidence of an active infestation, whereas presence of egg and egg cases alone merely indicate that infection has occurred at some time. The most reliable method of diagnosing the current active infestation is by detecting by detection combing. Uh, this is important criteria for several reasons. The first, individuals who do not have evidence of active infection should not receive chemical treatment. And children who do not have evidence of active infection must not be excluded from the schools. Management. The ideal treatment should be completely safe, free of harmful chemicals, readily available, easy to use, and inexpensive. General guidelines for use of chemical pediculocytes is to repeat the treatment after seven to 10 days because of their limited oviscidal activity, and that the lotion and liquid formulations are preferable to shampoos as later are relatively of low concentration of insecticides, and subsequently are of poor efficacy and leads to development of resistance. Preparations with aqueous base are less likely to irritate an excoriated scalp. The sprays are not suitable for people with asthma. Family members should be examined and treated only if they show evidence of active infection by adult lice. Nits may be removed by fine tooth comb, Treatment has more chances of success if applied or undertaken correctly and if all affected individuals in the household are treated simultaneously. All materials that touches the head of the infected person, such as hats, scarves, bedding, cushions must be thoroughly washed in hot water or around 50 degrees centigrade. Hair grooming aids like brushes, combs and curlers should either be discarded or decontaminated with insecticidal sprays or powder. The classical insecticides like dichloro, diphenyl, trichloroethane or DDT, lindane, carbaryl and melathione have been progressively replaced by pyrethrin and pyrethroid insecticides. Available formulation include one person permethrin or pyrethrin plus uh, piperonyl butoxide. 
Permethrin resistance in head lice is mostly conferred by the knockdown resistance KDR trait that conferred by three-point mutation in VGSC alpha subunit gene. Physical treatment is alternate to the chemical agents and in UK it is known as the bug bursting. It is the wet combing method that involves the ordinary shampoo followed by application of conditioner so that the hairs get soft and then combing using fine tooth comb to remove the lice. The procedure is repeated after every four days for two weeks. Shaving of the hair is not acceptable socially, but sometimes it is mandatory when the infection is intense with large number of lices and nits. Dimethicone lotion causes psychological, uh, causes physiological stress and death of head lice. Coconut dried emulsion shampoos, benzyl alcohol lotion, 5% and spinosad cream rinse may also be used as well as isopropyl micerate and cyclomethicone together. Other readily available occlusive substances such as oil and margarine are suggested. Similarly, vinegar, isopropyl alcohol, olive oil, mayonnaise, melted butter, petroleum jelly. The use of petroleum, petroleum jelly causes greatest egg mortality, allowing 6% to hatch, only 6% to hatch. Several products including lavender and tea tree oil are marketed in treatment of head lice and are in widely used. As far as the oral treatment is concerned, a single oral dose of ivermectin, 400 microgram per kg, which is double the dose of which we use in scabies, is repeated within seven days and achieve a high louse-free rate. Topical ivermectin has shown a greater efficacy than placebo if left, if applied on dry hair and left for 10 minutes and then rinsed with water. Trimethoprim sulfomethoxazole, popularly known as septron DS, is probably the only antibiotic that has the pediculocidal activity. So if you are treating an infected pediculosis, the antibiotic of choice should be trimethoprim sulfomethoxazole because it will not only treat the infection, but will also kill the uh, lice. Causes of therapeutic failure for head lice. Misunderstanding of instructions non-compliance by the patient, resistance, inappropriate instruction on head lice products or health professionals, high cost of products, misdiagnosis, psych psychogenic itch, incomplete oversettled activity, inappropriate preparations, for example, shampoos used, insufficient doses, time, frequency, and quantity of product applied, failure to retreat the patient, reinfestation, live eggs not removed by combing, etc. So the treatment summary is the first line is one person uh, permethrin or pyrethrin insecticide in case of therapeutic failure, switch to melathion. Second line is wet combing or treatment with diamethicone and other topical agents. Third and fourth line, ivermectin if available depending upon the country, but should be the last choice whether topical for still infested person and oral, uh, especially for mass treatment, which is of course an off-level indication. Now the second type of lice infection that is clothing or body lice known as the pediculus corporis. Because body lice are associated with poor socioeconomic conditions with infestation occurring only when clothes are not changed or washed regularly as we see in homeless people and in refugee camps. This body lies may transmit epidemic typhus caused by rickettsia provoski with symptoms like headache, fever, confusion, and rash, and trench fever, which is related to Bartonella contena. And the symptoms of trench fever include fever, myalgia, headache, meningoencephalitis, chronic adenopathies, and transient maculopapular exanthem but may be asymptomatic. Endocarditis may sometimes occur. Homeless people with chronic alcoholism are at risk. 
relapsing fever is not caused by body lice. Pathophysiology. This louse is almost identical in appearance to head louse, except that it is slightly larger and its development and its development is similar. Its natural habitat is clothing of its host, and it only visits the skin to feed. The eggs are cemented to clothing fibers with preference of clothing close to the skin, and seams are thus the favorite site of overposition. It thrives in situations where normal hygiene is lacking. The clothing louse and its eggs will not survive high temperature washing and ironing and is intolerant of temperature changes and its environment. It is therefore a parasite of individuals whose clothing is rarely changed or washed. Number of lice and eggs on clothing varies greatly. In most infected individual population is small, but sometimes there may be thousands of lice. So this is an example where there is a high num large number of lice infestation on the clothes. Clinical features. In most infected persons, itching is the principal complaint and pruritus is the result of sensitization to the louse salivary antigens. Body is often covered with excoriations and there may be secondary bacterial infection. In those having clothing lies for a long period of time to the skin is often hyperpigmented and such and is called as the vagabond disease. And this is probably a post-inflammatory phenomenon. So lies and eggs should be sought in the clothing. This is the presentation, just like looks like papular urticaria. Management, unlike the other form of louse infestations, the lesions caused by body lice are main focus of the treatment. Antibiotics are needed to treat louse-born infectious diseases. Bed linen and clothes should be systematically decontaminated and action suffice for some physicians. Other recommend thorough washing of the body with soap followed by application of pyrethrin or pyrethroids or melatonin for 8 to 24 hours. Recently, ivermectin, three doses of 12 milligram each given at uh, seven days interval was shown to reduce the number of body lies infecting a population of homeless men. Infested furniture, mattress, and box spring should be discarded, fumigated, or fumigated to destroy the lice and the nits. Then the third and last type of lice infection is caused by crab lice or thyrus pubis. The crab lice is transmitted by close physical contact, usually sexual, and infection with these lice occur most frequently among the sexually active young adults. Many patients with crab louse infection are found to be suffering from other STIs. Waxing of pubic hairs or removal of pubic hairs, particularly the fashion which is known as the Brazilian, was an important factor responsible for a decline in this infection. The lice is adapted to living in hair of a particular low density. The scalp hair, except at the scalp margin, are too dense, so crab louse is not involving those hairs. But it will colonize the axillary hairs, the eyebrows, eyelashes, beard hairs, and hair on the trunk and limb, in addition to the pubic hair. It is mainly sedentary, but become active at night when the host is sleeping. It moves by transferring its grip from one hair to another. So this is how a crab lice look like. It has quite distinctive in appearance than the pediculus humanus. The body is quiet and second and third pair of uh, legs carry heavy, heavy pincer-like claws. Pincer-like claws. Uh, to, um, uh, when static, the crab louse uses these huge claws to grip the adjacent hair close to the skin surface. The eggs are squared and bulging compared to pediculus. They are light brown in color and like those of head louse, are cemented to the hair shaft as we see in this picture. Clinical features. 
Itching mainly in the evening and at night is the principal symptom. Close inspection of the affected area will reveal a lice grasping the hair close to the skin surface and louse egg attached to the hair shaft. Louse feces is often visible as rust colored specks on the skin and hair and underclothing may be spotted with altered blood. On hairy areas of the body should be examined like all hairy areas should be examined like eyebrow, eyelashes, beard, axilla, areolar hairs and scalp margin. An enormous population of lice was attributed to inappropriate use of the topical steroids. Blue-gray macules, known as the maculae ceruli, are occasionally seen on the skin. Bullous lesions attributed to crab lice are reported. In children, crab lice may colonize eyelashes and the scalp. And an isolated finding should not be considered as indication of sexual abuse. Management. Pubic lice are treated in the same manner with insecticidal creams or lotions as pediculosis capitis, with second application after 7 to 10 days, as the products have poor obesity activity. While it's better to shave the hairs uh, if nits are plentiful. Infestation of eyelashes should be treated with 5% permethrin and washed off after 10 minutes or only with petroli, uh, petrolatum. Apply it twice daily for 8 to 10 days, followed by mechanical removal of the nits. Over ivermectin is used by some. As in other louse infestation, all sexual contacts should be examined and treated when necessary. Bedding and clothing should be washed with hot water. And treatment failure is usually a result of untreated hairy areas or reinfestation from untreated sexual contact. In addition, patients should be screened from associated sexually transmitted diseases. Now, the second disease which we are going to discuss today is a very important disease you all know is scabies caused by Sarcoptes scabii. In human scabies, um, is uh, in human and other animals is caused by a mite, also known as the acari. And the mite is of family Sarco Sarcoptidae, and it uh, is its name is Sarcoptes scabii. It's again an ectoparasite infection of humans, and the mite is called as Sarcopti Sarcoptes scabii war hominis. This mite only infest the humans. They are host specific and survive only for a short period on another host. The adult females can live in host for up to a month. The life cycle lasts for about 14 to 21 days. Mite appear to avoid areas with high density of pilosebaceous follicles. So in adults, the mite it does not colonize um, the face and scalp. Average number of adult female mite in individual is about 12, but uh, our observation is much larger the number as compared to this. Only in crusted scabies, a large number of mites are present. Individually, pruritus represents a nuisance. There is risk of contagiousness, Impetogenization, psychological impact, and potential associated sexually transmitted diseases that poses a concern. This is how a mite look like. The mite has four pair of legs, and they have a size of about 0.4 to 0.3 millimeter. And the male, this is the size of a female mite, and male mite is still smaller, 0.2 to 1.5 millimeter almost half size of a female mite. And the size is such a small that it is usually not visible by naked eye examination. And we need to use a microscope. The body is creamy white and marked by transverse corrugations, bristles and spine. Mite carry four pair of short legs. The anterior two pair end in an elongated pedicle. This is a pedicle, which is Tip with small suckers. These are the suckers. 
in female the rare two pairs these are the rare two pairs of legs and in long bristles or uh, cities cetas whereas the male bristles are present on the third pair and pedicles are present with sucker are present on the fourth pair of leg copulation occur in a small burrow excavated by the female and the burrow is not confined to stratum corneum but inclined downward into the epidermis after copulation the adult female enters the uh, burrow and start laying egg approximately 40 to 50 eggs are laid by each female during a life span of 4 to 6 weeks the eggs the eggs hatch after 3 to 4 days into larvae which digs new burrows and mature into adult mite in about 4 days the adult may star stay in the host or may be scratched off and transmitted to a new host epidemiology the scabies affect around 100 to 300 million people worldwide a proposed explanation for the cyclic fluctuation in prevalence in developed countries is the herd immunity theory it suggests that the epidemic of scabies confers a degree of immunity so that the further epidemic will not occur until a new susceptible population has arisen the factors determining epidemiology of scabies in im Impoverished, impo, uh, impoverished communities include the social attitude, population movement, malnutrition, lack of access to healthcare, inadequate treatment, and deficient hygiene. Scabies occur in all age groups. However, it is frequently seen in elderly, in residential age rooms, and nursing homes. Overall, sex incidence is equal, but mothers are frequently affected than fathers in a family. all ethnic groups are susceptible pathophysiology scabies is transmitted by close physical contact such as hand holding or bed sharing away from the host the mite survive for 24 to 36 hours at 21 degree centigrade with 40 to 80% humidity live mite is mite is demonstrated in dust samples collected in homes of infected patients allergic sensitivity to mite or its product appear to play a role in development of lesions other than burrows and producing pruritus both immediate and delayed type hyper sensitivity is involved however normal ige level is reported in one series susceptibility or resistant to sarcoptes scabies infection show some genetic predisposition susceptibility to severe disease is ige driven th2 response and resistance is interferon gamma dominated th1 response the recent development in scabies mite biology have shown that scabies can now be considered to be a complex interaction between host parasite and their associated microbiomes the clinical features itching is the most obvious manifestation of scabies and usually is pair face and in adults it is generally worse at night when the patient is warm Onset is three to four weeks after the infection is acquired. Reinfection of a previously cured individual may provoke immediate symptoms. Typical location of lesions are the finger webs, flexor surfaces of the wrist and elbows, axillary, buttocks, genitals, and breast of women. Typical lesion of scabies is a burrow and a nodule. Burrow is slightly raised brownish tortuous lesion. an inflammatory papule or vesicle sometimes surmount a burrow at one corner where mite is found if scraped the genitals of male should always be examined once scabies is suspected as the lesions here may provide an important diagnostic clue if burrows are absent or difficult to find elsewhere nodules occur mainly on the genitals the nodules are also surmounted by a vesicle which which homes a mite they are intensely itching and itchy and persist for weeks or months after the scabies has been effectively treated you can see the burrows here this is a vesicle that ends a burrow again there is a burrow with a vesicle here again this burrow uh, this uh, burrow ends at this papule and these are the places where the mite uh, is found if scraped and here you can see two nodules 
and on the nodule there are this tiny speck here and speck here. This speck is the place where you can find the mite. After the, you treat the scabies, this mite is gone, but the nodule stays for a longer period of time. So because of continuous scratching, secondary lesions are uh, developed. These are excoriations, eczematization, and impetigenization. And this can occur anywhere. Few variables depending upon the age and type of individual. In infant and young children, scabies involve the face and scalp as pilosebaceous activity has not yet started in this age group. In addition, the more extensive distribution of burrows, vesicles, and vesicular pustules are seen on hands and feet, and frequent eczematization, mimicking atopic or seboric dermatitis. Pruritus may be so severe that infants can be irritable and eat poorly. The homeless people. Eczematization and impetigo are common and pruritus in homeless shelter should always suspect scabies. The elderly burrow commonly occur on palm and soles and may be numerous. Truncal papillosquamous lesion often surrounded with burrows are also common. In immunocompromised patients, severe scabies, atypical papillary scabies or crusted scabies develop in patients who are either receiving topical or systemic corticosteroids, those with HIV infection, organ transplant recipient, and patient of advanced ages. So in such patient, pruritus can be mild or absent and other signs of scabies are not present and hence it is called as scabies incognito. Indigenous community, scabies, whether crusted or not, may be endemic. For example, in, poor, in people with poor nutritional status, inadequate medical facilities and overcrowding. Atypical presentation, scabies in scalp. It is not a common ha happening, but may accompany or simulate seborrheic dermatitis or dermatophytosis infection of the scalp. This is a mistype. So this is, read it as dermatophytosis. Infant and children, the elderly patient with AIDS and patient with crusted scabies may be affected. The nodular scabies comprises of few violaceous pruritic nodules localized on groin, axilla, and male genitals and represent hypersensitivity reaction to mite antigen and it persists for weeks or months after treatment. Scabies mimicking immunologically mediated diseases, sometimes bullous pemphigoid, urticaria, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, B-cell lymphoma, CD30 positive lymphoid proliferation, and necrotizing vasculitis, and lupus erythematosus can all mimic scabies. Complication eczematous changes, Inappropriate use of topical steroid modify the clinical picture and hence known as scabies incognito. Secondary infection like folliculitis or impetigo. And in tropic or subtropic, if infection is because of the beta hemolytic streptococci, then such patients are at risk of developing hematuria related glomerulonephritis as a complication. Investigation the typical history of pruritus and nocturnal exacerbation and presence of contact cases within the family and distribution of eruption of inflammatory papules should suggest the diagnosis and we do not require any investigation. The presence of genital lesions in men and breast lesion in women are, is strongly suggested. Absolute confirmation is done only by discovery of burrow or by microscopic examination. The papule or vesicle on the burrow is gently scraped off the skin with blunt scalpel or sharp edge of a common pin and material is placed on liquid, in liquid paraffin on a glass slide and seen under a microscope. Presence of mite, X fragment of eggshells or scabella confirms the diagnosis. And failure to find mite is common and does not rule out scabies. Dermoscopic finding of scabies is important and the dermoscopic finding is described as a jet with contrail. This is the um, appearance of a jet with, which is emitting the gases on the rear side. So at low magnification, the dermoscope gives a circumflex accent-like image that is the French letter O, representing head and two pair of front legs of a mite. A skin biopsy is rarely required, but if done, is confirmatory and mite can be identified 
mainly in the stratum corneum, but also going sometime deep into the epidermis. So these are three mites in one burrow. Uh, rest of the epidermis shows um, um, acanthosis, spongiosis, and dense perivascular lymphocytic and eosinophil infiltrate. You can see bundled uh, not many eosinophils in this slide in the dermis. The principles of treatment of scabies. First of all, establish the diagnosis and then choose appropriate medication. Then treat the whole body from neck to toe and head and face in babies. Treat all the contacts, give both verbal and written prescription, treat secondary infection if present, avoid over-treatment, have a follow-up one or four weeks after treatment and launder the clothes and bedding after completing the treatment. Instructions for topical treatment of scabies. Start with warm bath and dry thoroughly afterwards. Medication provided should be rubbed into the skin. All part of the body from chin downwards, whether involved or uninvolved, should be treated. Treatment is best done at night before going to bed. Avoid touching your mouth or eyes with your hand. And at least least period of time, the drug, the medicine should be in contact with the body should be 12 hours. Change your underclothings and sheet the next day and launder them. All clothing and bedding should be washed with a temperature around 50 degrees centigrade and or kept in a plastic bag for 72 hours. Materials of fomite that cannot be washed should be treated with insecticidal products. Everyone in the house should be treated at the same time uh, and repeat the treatment after one week. The same time is important because it is a common um, observation that people don't get treated, don't apply the medicine at the same time. And this will not have, this will not create the good impact of the treatment as when it is done by all the people at the same time. So the topical agents that are used is uh, scabicidal include permethrin 5% cream, the most popular, lindane, gamamazine, hexachloride 1% lotion or cream, benzyl, benzoate 12.5% um, and 25%. Melathion, melathion 0.5% lotion, monosulfiram, 25% lotion, protomiton, 10% precipitated sulfur, 2 to 6%. Recently added is SD palithrine, 0.63% aerosol, and ivermectin, 0.8% lotion. Sulfur is the oldest antiscabetic anti used. It is used in ointment form, usually at 6%. Ointment is applied over the whole body for three consecutive nights. This uh, ointment is messy, malodorous, stained clothes, and in hot and humid climate, it may lead to, it will very uncomfortable and lead to irritant dermatitis. But it has advantage of being cheap. Sulfur should be used only in situations where adults cannot tolerate lindane or permethrin or ivermectin as it is inferior to all these agents. Benzyl benzoate is once a very popular treatment, but now uh, hardly used. It is neurotoxic and in adult is given as 25% emulsion and children is given as 12.5% emulsion. Done by diluting it with half water. It is applied uh, after taking baths from neck to toe and the application should be repeated two times more in the next 24 hours. Repeated uses, usage may lead to allergic dermatitis and it is forbidden in pregnant and lactating women and infants and young children below two years of age. Protomiton 10% cream or lotion. It is not a successful treatment, but is effective as a post scabies pruritus ointment. Lindane, also known as gamma benzene hexachloride, 1%. Uh, acts on central nervous system of insect and lead to increased excitability, conversion, and death of the mite. A single uh, 12 hour, 6 hour or 12 hour application is effective treatment for scabies. Some authors recommend a repeat application after one week. Lindane 1% cream or lotion has been found to be very effective in the treatment. Lindane has a disadvantage that it causes CNS toxicity in humans. And the clinical signs include headache, nausea, dizziness, vomiting, restlessness, tremors, disorientation, weakness, twitching of eyelids, 
convulsions, respiratory failure, coma, and death. Hence, it is not useful for infant and young children and an inflamed and infected skin. Permethrin, or synthetic parathroid, is a potent insecticide. It is very effective against mite with low mammalian toxicity. Permethrin absorbed cutaneously only in small number, rapidly metabolized by skin estrases and is treated in urine. Permethrin 5% dermal cream are applied overnight once a week for two weeks. Once a week for two weeks to entire body, including head to in head in infants. The contact period is about eight hours. It is the latest and most effective treatment for scabies. Permethrin can be safely used in young children and virtually no allergic side effects and cosmetically it is highly accepted. There are several studies which show that permethrin has a higher clearance rate than lindane. Oral, iver oral ivermectin. It interrupts the gamma aminobutyric acid induced neurotransmission of the mite and is given in a dose of 200 microgram per kg as a single dose in patients who are more than two years of age or more than 15 kg of weight. A second dose is a necessary seven to 14 days later due to the lack of obesidal activity. A single dose of three tablets in adult more than 70 kg of weight or two doses or two tablets in individuals more than 50 kg of weight, one tablet in individuals between 30 to 50 kg and half tablet in individuals between 15 to 30 kg. Because ingestion of food increased the bioavailability, so it is advised that the tablet should be taken with food. Ivermectin is apparently safe drug with low incidence of side effects. It appears to be safe in children and its use in pregnant women is discouraged in USA. It is possible that patients receiving oral ivermectin remain contagious longer than those receiving topical therapies. So oral ivermectin should not be considered as an alternate to topical escapicidal creams and lotions. Special treatment consideration. In children, benzyl benzoate, esda, parathrin, and permethrin are used. And in impetigo, oral, oh, in impetigo, oral ivermectin is preferred because the topical creams will uh, cause irritation. And um, uh, antibiotic therapy against Streptococcus pyogenes staph aureus should be given before the topical creams can be advised. In pregnancy and breastfeeding, permethrin, benzyl benzoate, and sulfur are all safe. Um, oral ivermectin is not approved in USA but is permitted in France for pregnant and breastfeeding mothers. Institutional eye outbreaks require coordination and adequate education of all the involved personnel and sustained effort to rapidly control the outbreak. The follow-up itching. This follow-up itching may persist for several days after scabies and should be clearly explained to the patient. And such patients should receive topical emollients or topical corticosteroids with antihistamines. Sometimes the duration of treatment for post scabies pruritus is around about two weeks. Causes of treatment, uh, causes and treatment of persistent itching in scabies. It can be because of cutaneous irritation for and by the topically applied creams and is treated by use of topical steroids. Allergic contact dermatitis, if developed, again is treated by a topical steroid and scabies side creams should be stopped. Treatment failure, evaluate the cause and treat it. And delusion of parasitosis, which sometimes occur after a prolonged scabies infestation and should be managed by psychiatric ways. Causes of treatment failure is poor compliance of the patient, inappropriate or insufficient treatment, resistance to scabies side medications and re-infestation or relapse. Then the uh, Norwegian or crusted scabies. The word Norwegian is used for the crusted scabies from the uh, description in Norway by Danielson and Bjork uh, of a type of scabies with huge number of mite, which is seen in lepers. It is strongly recommended that Norwegian word should be removed and this kind of scabies should be named either as crusted scabies or hyperkeratotic scabies. 
This crusted scabies is a rare and severely disabling form of disease that is characterized by infestation of up to million of mites and development of hyperkeratotic skin crusts. Uh, an undiagnosed case of crusted scabies may be a source of outbreak to many individuals. Pathophysiology crusted scabies occur in people with inadequate immune response to the mite, allowing them to multiply unchecked. It's a severe disease with significant higher morbidity than ordinary scabies. Patients who are mentally retarded or suffer from dementia may develop crusted scabies. The reason of association with mental abnormality is due to lack of appreciation of pruritus because the pruritus is sometimes protective that pruritus scratches the burrows and um, removes the mite from the skin. Crusted scabies may develop in patients who are immunosuppressed either as a result of disease or therapy, including infleximab or tocilizumab and patient with HIV infection. And crusted scabies also result from use of topical steroids and pimercolimus for other indications. So clinically, large warty crusts are seen on hand and feet. Palm and soles may show hyperkeratosis and fissuring. Nail apparatus show mass of horny debris beneath the thickened and discolored nail, as you can see here. Erythema and scaling occur on the face, neck, scalp, and trunk and may be generalized. The extent of erythroderma and warty plaques varies greatly and, I, and either may predominate. Aging is almost absent or slight, but may be severe. Generalized lymphadenopathy is present in some cases, and blood eosinophilia and elevated IgE levels are common. So the crusted scabies is misdiagnosed as hyperkeratotic eczema, as plaque psoriasis, Darius disease, contact dermatitis, or Langerhans cell histocytosis. If you scrape the lesions, hundreds of mites are seen in the scrape, as you can see in the slide. Along with the eggs and uh, uh, along with the eggs management, such patient should be hospitalized and isolated because of risk of uh, spread of infection in others. All contacts of the individuals must be treated. Keratolytic agents such as salicylic acid is given to the patient to remove the thick crusts. Nails should be cut short and brush with scabicidal agents. Topical scabicide application should be repeated, repeated um, daily or alternate days until two parasitological tests, three days apart become negative. And it may take a few weeks. Administration schedule of ivermectin is based on severity of the infection. And usually three to seven doses are, is proposed. Then the last topic is the animal scabies. This is the scabies which is accidentally caused by the mite that is not primarily of human type. And skin lesions result from contact with animal scabies vary in extent and distribution according to the mode of exposure. Eruption is usually comprising of small pruritic veils and papules which are frequently excoriated and resemble the human scabies, but there are no burrows as the mites are, are not present uh, in the skin of humans. <laughs> Lesions from exposure to sarcopti mite in dog and cats usually occur at site where the contact of animal occur like in chest, abdomen, thighs and fora. The management. If contact with animal scabies is suspected, the diagnosis can only be confirmed by examining and taking strapping from the suspected animals, affected animals should be treated by veterinary practitioner. So the human scabies, skin lesions are self-limiting, will resolve once the exposure to affected animal has ceased or is treated. Despite this, skin eruption may be uncomfortable and patient may be treated with 5% permethrin or oral ivermectin, single dose, or with topical corticosteroids, menthol, and oral antihistamine for symptomatic relief. This comes to the end of this lecture. I hope this lecture would be of benefit to you for your exam and for your clinical practice. I thank you all for a very patient listening.